Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate some of the features of the EUS console. Um, we've got a chap who's having a celiac plexus neurolysis here, and I'm at a nice neutral position at about 45 degrees. And those who've done any EUS will know that this is the liver hilum. So we've got the portal vein coming out the liver. Let me just get my pointer on. So here's my portal vein. Here's the left lobe of the liver. And if I shorten a little bit and do a little bit of talking, you can see IVC and middle vein of the liver. That's the IVC running through the liver here. If I rotate clockwise from there, we're going to come in on aorta, which is there. But for the issues of what we call knobology, which probably needs a better name, it's all about the different features of the US console to enhance your image. So the first thing to be mindful of is your focal point. So depending on what I'm trying to look at here, these arrows on the right-hand side are your focal points. And I look I'm using the Hitachi um, stack here. And a lot of the more modern systems now have an automatic focal point, so it's not something you need to worry about. So I've always quite liked to have one focal point. So to reduce that to one, and then one of your buttons on your system on here on this particular console focuses top right. And you can see how we are enhance, um, focusing in on the bit we need. That's the first thing. The second important thing is the gain. And if you like, that's the volume of the image. So we can turn the gain right down. Can't see very much. Or we can turn the gain up. And then it's too bright. So you want that to be in a nice sort of neutral black and white image. So that's the important one. And that's the gain here. The other thing that you might see go wrong is the gain at different sites of the image. So these sliders, a bit like a disc jockey's desk on Radio 1, you can drop the gain lower down and bring them up higher up. And then you get a very perverted image. So for a neutral diagnostic scan, you want those to be in the middle. So that's gain. And it's important that you know how to troubleshoot when that's the case. The next thing is the depth of your view. So we see on the right hand side here, we've got these numbers. This is the depth in centimeters. So we go down to six. And the depth mag is this button here on this particular system. So if we dial that clockwise, we're reducing the field of view. We're not doing anything to the image quality. We're just reducing the depth of the view. So an important feature of image quality is this number down here. So FR means frame rate. The higher the frame rate, the more frames per second we're generating by the system, and therefore the better the image. So you'll see by changing the gain, we're not doing anything to the frame rate or how hard the machine is working, uh, although we are at the, at the bigger depths there. So for a decent diagnostic pancreatic scan, you might, that want, you might want that at about five, maybe six. Um, if you're looking the depth of the liver for metastases, etc., you'd want that to be magged out. Or if you're struggling to find a gallbladder anatomically, you want that to be give you a bigger field of view with the, with the depth um, dialed right out. If you're looking for a submucosal lesion, first of all, find it endoscopically but then you're going to want to get really, really close with a two centimeter gain. OK, so again, back to five here. The next thing is the frequency of the image. And this is a really crucial point to understand. So the lower the sound's frequency, the further the sound wave will travel. So just think about, the, um, think about a whale in the sea. And the deeper the sound of the whale, the further the, structures the, the sound waves travel. So the knob here on this particular device is the frequency. And as I reduce the frequency down to 5 megahertz, that's telling me there what the frequency is, the sound waves are going to travel further and give me better images of deeper structures. So if I turn the gain down, we're getting better images of the more remote bits of the liver from here with a lower frequency. From there, if I lift the frequency, so I've moved the focus, press the wrong button. If I lift the frequency up to 10, we're getting much nicer pictures at the top, but we've virtually lost all ability to look in the mid-range here. 
So let me just show you that again. That's top frequency 10, reducing the frequency down to five, much better views of deeper structures. So you probably want about 7.5, maybe 6.5 for normal diagnostic HPB work. Again, going back to the subepithelial lesions as an example, we're going to turn the frequency right the way up and we're going to mag right the way up and then you can't get any better resolution of the layers of the mucosa and submucosa than we've got there. I don't have a, an SEL to show you there. And then the final little uh, basic knobology thing is your Doppler. So I'm just going to return my frequency back to 7.5. And your Doppler tells you if something has flow in it or not. So the obvious example here is the portal vein is obviously going to have a flow to it. So you hit the Doppler button. And that's actually got a, a vessel there. And that's flow within the portal vein. And just be mindful that the Doppler also has a gain. So if you dial that all the way down, if inadvertently the Doppler is dialed down, you might, might mistake that for a non-vessel, i.e. maybe a bile duct if you're looking in the wrong deck. That's obviously an issue. Similarly, if you put the gain all the way up, it's a real mess. So it's a good idea on your way down to the lesion of interest that you've uh, calibrated the Doppler gain so that it's right in the middle there. So real vessels are showing up. You've then got your fine flow, which can sometimes be even more sensitive. And standard Doppler can tell you if blood is moving away or towards, but usually the pulsiform um, characteristics of the Doppler can do that. We can do clever things like zoom in on this area and get Doppler waveforms to work out if it's venous and what the phases are for arterial, but in routine practice, that's seldom necessary and beyond what we need to talk about in terms of basic intro to, to the console features. So that's it. Off with the Doppler. You'll see what Doppler does to the image quality because the machine is working extra hard. Our frame rate has dropped to 35. So it's not a good idea to do your routine diagnostic work with Doppler on for that reason. As soon as we drop the Doppler, this goes back up to 92 on the frame rate. So try not to work the whole time with Doppler on. But once you think you're in a lesion or you're evaluating something or you're trying to orientate yourself, pop your Doppler on, but make sure you pop it off again. And that is the basic introduction to Doppler. Uh, another feature is freezing and being able to wind back. Really useful for important photo documentation. And then other features of this console is caliper. So not that you'd particularly want to measure the diameter of a portal vein as we're doing here, but that's how you would do that. And that's really important for photo documentation of bile duct and pancreatic duct caliber. And then the last thing you can do is annotate. So you press the button over here. Uh, and these are all presets. And we're going to go with portal vein, press enter, stick that on there. And that means we can label our images. This should then go into your pack system in your trust or on the endoscopy report, but very important information medical legally for our, our MDTs and decision planning. So that is an intro to knobology.